um, collection of stories that we've been somewhat familiar with and just heard the different ways that that can apply into our lives. Um, and we've had different words like gathering and pruning and testing. Today's word is blessing. Blessing. And we'll hear about Mary and how she blesses Jesus um, a little bit later in our gospel for today. Um, <clears throat> We always start off the morning with just a few announcements so you can know what is going on in the life of St. Mark. Today is your last day to purchase flowers for Easter Sunday. So if you wanted to buy flowers in memory or in honor of a family member or family, um, today is your last day to do that. And Ginny has a very decorated table out in the narthex, so make sure you stop by and fill out that form today. Um, There is information about signing up for Camp WAPO for kids anywhere from completed second grade to completed high school. We have uh, information about First Communion for those who are interested in that, as well as um, I just want to say thank you. We have, we put out the need that gas cards are needed um, for members in our community that kind of come in and need help in that way, and you guys have delivered in great and wonderful ways, so thank you for your generosity in helping um, support that area of ministry. Um, <clears throat> those are all the official announcements that I have. We have our Holy Week schedule printed in here, but we also have our magnets on the table out there. If you uh, want to take a magnet home so you can know the times and dates of all of our services coming up. It's our final day for our book study of the practice of prayer. We will gather after a little bit. Uh, We'll let everybody kind of get their coffee and treats, but then those who want to participate in the conversation can head into the library um, and be a part of that. And then tomorrow night, we will meet on Zoom um, at 6.30 for those who want to meet in that capacity. But we're in our final two chapters of the practice of prayer, and it has been such a delightful conversation around that book. Um, So whether you've been a part of the conversation or you've read the book, We hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I look forward to our conversation later today. Our choir is here, and they're processing in. Ooh, it's almost like we're back to our old roots again, right? This is happening. It's very exciting. Um, I just also like to say a word of thank you to everyone who is helping kind of get things back in order again as the weather gets nice, as we start putting things back on the calendar, as we prepare and have worship. Um, for those who help record, uh, so people can watch from home, setting up the table for communion, cleaning up, singing, ushering, all the things. So my deepest, uh, my deepest thank yous for all those who help. I am going to invite you to stand as you are able for a time of confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, We confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own way. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. You can find the words and music in your hymnal underneath your chairs. 
hymn number 324. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us sing our Kyrie together. God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love, given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated, and I want to invite the kids to come forward for a little children's message this morning. Come sit down here. Okay. I wanted to know if you were at all interested in smelling my feet today. <laughs> no? You don't? Okay, how about you spell the feet that I have in my hands? These feet. They're printed. Okay. No, you still won't? Okay, let me tell you a little bit why we're doing this, and then maybe you will. There's a story today about how these siblings, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, are throwing a party. And Jesus comes to their party. And Martha is a busy one, and she's just getting everything ready and wanting to make sure everyone's fed and doing the right thing. And then there's Mary, who comes and sits down to, like, hang out and listen to Jesus, because Jesus usually has really good things to say, right? But then Mary takes very expensive perfume and wants to wash and bless Jesus' feet. 
with this very expensive perfume, right? It seems a little strange. Even one of um, Jesus' buddies is like, ah, what are you doing? That can be used for many other things besides feet. That's really weird. And Jesus says, no, 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 Judas. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. Let's let her do it. And Mary is so grateful to have some time with Jesus and to know that his death is going to be coming soon. So she wants to bless him and show how much she loves and appreciates him. So she washes his feet with this very good smelling perfume. Now, what is a smell that you really like to smell? Do you know? I'll give you an example for me. I love the smell of fresh cut grass. Like right after someone's mowed the lawn, it smells so good. What about you? Like, do you like the smell of chocolate chip cookies in your house? Knowing that you probably get to eat some a little later, hopefully. Okay, what about the smell of fresh laundry when you know something's really... You, you have cookies at your house? Okay, good. I'm going to come over to your house fast and we can have cookies. Okay? All right, what else smells good? Do you guys ever have those smelling markers that smell really good based on... You have the sense markers at school? Okay. What else? Does anything else smell good to you? What else smells good? Spring or flowers... Flowers usually smell really nice. So what I did is I put some really good smelling stuff on here. Do you guys want to smell what they are? Yeah. They smell good. Do you like the smell of orange? This one sm wait. This might be key lime pie. <laughs> smell that one. Smell I, it smells good. I promise. I wouldn't put anything sticky on there. Do you smell key lime? Does it smell kind of like key lime pie? Okay. This one, this one smells like orange. Orange and honey. Oh. You really don't want to smell? You want to smell that one? Mmm, orange and honey. Mmm. Now this one I think is strawberry and coconut. Oh yeah, strawberry and coconut. You don't want to smell it? No? It smells nice, right? Wouldn't it be nice if all feet smelled like this? <laughs> That'd be so nice. You want to smell? You want to smell? She's curious now. Mm -hmm. Smells nice. She does smell nice. I know. Nice smelling feet is a good thing. So what I love about the story today is that Mary does something that seems a little strange, right? To put some really expensive perfume on someone's feet. But what I love about Mary is that she's like, but I want to do it because I love Jesus so much that I want to do that. And so I like that in the presence of Jesus or in the presence of God's love, we can do things that maybe might seem a little weird, but if it's for God and if it's going to bless somebody else or if it's going to make someone else feel good, doesn't that seem like a good idea to do it? I'm not saying go and rub perfume on anybody's feet. That may seem a little strange in this time of day. But maybe making a card for someone that says happy spring Maybe if uh, you find a flower to give to your mom, or maybe you wash the dishes with really good smelling soap, you know, doing something kind for someone else because you love them, because God loved us first, so then we can love other people. So if you want to see if your mom wants a foot <laughs> massage with oil or something, you could throw that out there, but I'm not saying you have to do that. Okay, but I want you guys each to think of something, a way that you can show God's love to someone that you love in your life, okay? And I want you to figure out a way to do that, okay? That's your, that's your challenge for today, okay? All right, so you think about that. Let's pray. I want everyone to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thanks, for loving us, thanks for loving us so we can love others. So we can love others. Give us creative ideas. Give us to, show your love. to show your love every day. Every day. We, love we love you a lot. A lot. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to smell the feet one more time? <laughs> All right, you guys can head back to your seats. The choir is going to sing now, okay?
The first reading this morning is from Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do new, a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give wa water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our psalm today will be read responsively. The lectern side will read the regular print, and the pulpit side will read the bold. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was the mouth filled with laughter, and her tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negri. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Please stand as we sing our gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. <coughs> Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of, them, one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointing Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii at the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used, and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Perhaps you have heard this origin story, the story of Sir Isaac Newton and how he came up with the three laws of motion he credited with discovering, or at least questioning, identifying, and exploring. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't the apple falling on his head, but it did have to do with an apple. As one website explains, Newton was home from university for an extended time due to an outbreak of bubonic plague. Huh being home from school for a disease outbreak. I guess history really does repeat itself. Huh. So while he was home, he sat in the family orchard one afternoon and observed that a tree fell from it. So according to this source, upon watching the apple fall, he started to wonder why it was that apples always fell straight down and not upward or to the side. 
In 1867, he published a paper which includes his three laws of motion. The first law is the law of inertia. Simply put, an object at rest will stay at rest. The second law, a body in motion tends to stay in motion in the same direction when a force is applied directly to it. And the third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Oh, good job, you guys. It's this third law that kind of rang through my mind when we are thinking about our text for this morning. This week comes to the end of our hungering for the basic stories theme. We've had our weeks of testing and gathering and pruning, and last week, homecoming. And today, the word is blessing. Out of the Gospel of John this morning, we encounter Mary, Martha, and Lazarus hosting this wonderful dinner in Jesus' honor, celebrating the brothers' return to life. After dinner, Mary does what is seemingly familiar to her. She sits at Jesus' feet. But this time, instead of talking to him and asking questions, she sits quietly. And not just sitting quietly, Mary takes out a, po- a pound of nard or oil and begins to wash Jesus' feet with it. Then, of course, you know, Jesus or Judas jumps right in to say, but that's so expensive. Couldn't it be sold in the money given to the poor? I mean, it's a valid question, sure. The oil was worth approximately 300 denarii, which for a laborer, that's about almost a year of wages. But what does Jesus do? Does he stop and say, wow, Judas, you sure do have a good point. Nope. In fact, Jesus does the opposite. He rebukes Judas for his questioning of Mary's use of the oil, which she purchased for the intention of using it for Jesus' burial. Jesus does not take issue with the temporary nature of the gift. In fact, he seems to be okay with the reason for its use. He declares the use of the gift as appropriate in that moment, particularly in the light of his impending death. So then what's the big deal then about washing feet with this expensive perfume? Well, as Reverend David Lowe, former professor extraordinaire of mine at Luther Seminary, Reflected in his commentary, he writes, It was unexpected that someone would use such a costly amount of perfume to clean someone's feet. It was unexpected, at least to those in attendance, that Jesus would dampen the mood of the feast and gift by talking about his upcoming death. And it was unexpected that he would engage in an argument over dinner with one of his disciples. But what was perhaps the most unexpected is that Jesus is anointed by Mary. It may be a wonder why Los believes that this was indeed the most unexpected thing that took place. Because he continues to say it is usually men who anoint men. Samuel anointing Saul to be Israel's first king. Male popes anointing male emperors throughout Western history. But here... It's Mary who lets down her hair and anoints, blesses Jesus. All of which reminds me that God is often up to unexpected things with, for, and throughout unexpected people. Mary blesses Jesus. Now because of her conviction and belief and trust in Jesus, Mary blessed him in a way that she knew how because that's how she lived out her faith. And she's not the only one in the Bible who can be seen as someone who reacts and responds in unexpected ways. You could take any of your picks of the favorites. Moses as a leader, because he had a speech impediment. Or Abraham and Sarah to start a family. Or David, a tiny little shepherd boy, to become a king. God regularly loves to do the unexpected with, for, and through unexpected people. God's belief in these people to do great things seems to go back 
to Newton's second law. An object in motion will tend to stay in motion when a force is acted upon it in the same direction. Translated to our faith, when God maybe nudges us in a direction that we are already going, how can we not react in a way that to some may seem unexpected? And according to Judas, unnecessary? Author Debbie Thomas puts it plainly when she writes that Mary's reaction to Jesus' presence in her house after listening to his teachings is about just that. And she does it immediately. Mary responds to the call of love in that moment, in the now. Knowing what Jesus is about to face, knowing that he's in urgent need of companionship or comfort or solace, knowing that the time is short to express all gratitude and affection she carries at her heart, Mary acts upon it. Given the choice between an abstracted need, the poor out there, and the concrete need that presents itself at her own doorstep, around her own dinner table, Mary chooses the here and now. She loves the body and soul who is placed in her presence. And in doing so, she ends up blessing the one who is denied room at the inn, even to be born. For the one who has no place to lay his head during his years of ministry. For the one whose crucified body is laid in a borrowed tomb. In other words, it is the poor Mary serves when she serves Jesus. Just as it is always Jesus we serve when we love without reservation what God places in front of us in the here and now. It is important sometimes to think and to plan and to discern when it comes to our faith. But it's also important to make sure that our plan doesn't paralyze us. That we can't be receptive to the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. To stir us to do something, heaven forbid, unexpected. To cause us to react with blessing. Sometimes it is important to do something right now. Because that moment might come and then go too quickly. If the Holy Spirit is working and moving and living and breathing through us to serve as Christ's hands and feet in that moment, then pull out your best Nike impression and just do it. As we sit here with only seven short days between the Lenten journey and Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, and then all that follows in the days after, where will you find any of the words that we have focused on during this season of Lent? Testing, gathering, pruning, homecoming, and now blessing. Although our Holy Week texts and stories remain the same year after year, how will you continue to hunger for them? Of course, you can do the things that seem like the good, you know, Sunday school answers. You can pray and read the Bible and participate in educational opportunities. But then what? What does responding to these basic stories that we've been hearing look like in your life outside of Sunday mornings? Good old Frederick Beekner has one of the best responses, I think, to this question. One of my all-time favorite authors, Beeker seems to be, seems to put things in a way that is just. And it makes sense about what to do and how to react to God's call on your life. And Beekner says this, Vocation comes from the Latin vocare, to call, and means the work a person is called to by God. 
There are all different kinds of voices calling you to all different kinds of work. And the problem is to find out which is the voice of God rather than of society, say, or superego or self-interest. By and large, a good rule for finding out is this. The kind of work God usually calls you to is the kind of work, A, that you need to do, and B, that the world needs to have done. If you really get a kick out of your work, you presumably met requirement A. But if your work is writing maybe, I don't know, cigarette ads, the chances are you've missed the requirement. On the other hand, if your work is being a doctor in a leper colony and you have probably met requirement B, but if most of the time you're bored or depressed by it, the chances are you've not only bypassed A, but probably aren't helping your patients much either. Neither the hair shirt nor the soft birth will do. The place God calls you is to the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. It is my prayer. If you haven't found that intersection of your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger, that you take this time to seek it out. If you have already found that intersection, it is my prayer that it continues to be the sweet spot in ways to be a blessing to others. Whatever the case, wherever you find yourself, may the stories of Jesus continue to feed our hunger and connect us with the God that knows us, every hair on our head, the God that walks with us, the God that blesses us each and every day. May you be fed by these basic stories. May you be nourished by the stories that are to come that we hear year after year of Holy Week. And may you find that beautiful sweet spot of an intersection where your deep compassion meets the world's deepest need. May it be so for you and for me. Thanks be to God. Amen. Together, let us now confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. and all who are in need. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel. Bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. We pray especially for Eastern Europe and all those affected by the unrest in Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed for those experiencing homelessness, for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick, especially Donnie and Connie Lundholm as they remember their daughter, Mandy, Cindy, Jean, Michael, Richard, Robin, Ruth, Yvonne, Susan, Sherry, Sue, Wendy, and all that we name in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray also for the health and well-being of our brothers and sisters in Tanzania. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment to share the peace with one another this day. invite the congregation to be seated and I call our ushers forward as we now will gather our offering in for today.
Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Will you all please join me in our Lord's Prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, so please know that if you are here, you are welcome to join in the meal. We are going to invite you forward where you can come up and take one of our pre-packaged cups of grape juice and wafer. We just ask that you wait until you get back to your seat to open it and eat it, and then you can put your cup in the baskets that are in your pews. We have gluten-free wafers available. Just let your server know. For those of you that are worshiping with us at home, please know that whatever elements you have to share in the meal, they are blessed with the words when you hear me say, the body and blood of Christ are given and shared for you. The table is ready. All are welcome.
I invite you to stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace always. Amen. Amen. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Well, I hope everyone is able to get outside and get some vitamin D with, or rain or snow or whatever comes our way. We live in Minnesota. We're ready for anything. Um, but may you go out into your week. May you know that you are a blessing, not only to this community, but to all those that you encounter this week. So may you hear this blessing. You are children of God anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our sending hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, 338. and serve the Lord.
drive some Sunday. Okay. <laughs>